Hi friends, it's not a secret that I have a passion for assembling all kinds of power supplies. At the moment I have assembled at least four rather serious stabilizers on the basis of which it is possible to assemble very good laboratory power supplies. But they lay unused yet. The basis has already been made and everything is ready. It remains only to overcome my laziness and just place them in the boxes. But despite this, I'm eager to collect and test all popular power supply circuits. About four years ago, I collected one very interesting circuit of the laboratory stabilizer of the bar's design. This circuit was published in the magazine Elector Electronics almost 20 years ago. At that time, I developed a printed circuit board, assembled it, but something didn't work out. In fact, the circuit was worked, but not as expected. In general, I postponed this and forgot for as long as four years, but recently, the board itself found me. This circuit attracted my attention with special simplicity. Well, it's not very simple, but it doesn't contain any rare components and it's built exclusively on transistors. It's an excellent option for beginners. A detailed inspection of the circuit made it clear that there was no error in it. It was rather thought out and should work. So, armed with patience for a couple of hours, I drew a new printed circuit board. Experience comes with time. Four years ago, the PCB turned out at least two times more than now. And by the way, the printed circuit board has turned out to be very good. The quality is high, but it's certainly not comparable with the factory one. I remind you that our permanent sponsor website GLCPCB, which is one of the leading manufacturers of printed circuit boards, will produce for you printed circuit boards of any complexity, shape and quantity at the most favorable prices, starting from $2 for 10 pieces. Free shipping will be available for the first order. Quality is guaranteed. A link to GLCPCB can be found in the description under the video. This circuit was republished many times in various magazines and online publications. It was modified, changed, but we will assemble the original version from the author. How it works has been described many times. The information is very easy to find in the Internet. It's a full-function current and voltage regulator. Adjustment range of output voltage is from 0 to 40 volts at current from 0 to up to 3 amperes. The circuit is completely linear. Resistor P1 allows to smoothly adjusting the output voltage from zero to the upper limit. Resistor P2 is responsible for limiting the output current. Trimmers P3 and P4 are designed to set the upper limits of the output current and voltage, respectively. The reference voltage is formed by a pair of Zener diodes through a divider built on the variable resistor P1. This voltage is applied to one of the inputs of a differential amplifier built on a pair of transistors T5 and T6. To the second input comes the portion of the output voltage. Thus, the amplifier will try to equalize the voltage at its input. This is done by changing the voltage at the input of the current gain cascade built on transistors T1, T2, T3 and T4. This leads to stabilization of the output voltage. The current stabilization mode works even easier. The circuit has a low resistance current sensor resistor R4. It's the shunt. If the load connected to the output of the stabilizer consumes more current than specified, the voltage drop across the resistor R4 increases. This drop is sufficient to open the transistor T7. Its working will open the transistor T4. The open T4 reduces the voltage on the base of control transistor T3. This will reduce the output voltage and hence the current until it is stabilized at a predetermined value. This value is changed by resistor P2. Now let's go to the design. 
Given the dead cartridge of my printer, the PCB came out good. In the circuit use the most common transistors, so no problems with them will arise. The problems can arise with the upper Zener diode of 2.4 volts. In domestic stores I didn't find it and put Zener diode of 3.3 volts. You can try to replace it with an LED, but first you need to check voltage drop on it. If it's about 2.4 volts, then you can use it. Although Zener diode accuracy is much better than the LEDs. I strongly advise you to take 5 watts resistor as the current sensor R4. I reduced the resistance of 0.22 ohms. With value indicated at the circuit, at high currents there will be quite a perceptible drawdown of the output voltage. A power transistor is any low frequency NPN transistor that can dissipate 150 watts or more. The use of transistors in metal housing is preferable. Although it is said that up to 40 volts can be applied to the input, I still advise you to reduce the supply voltage to 25 to 30. Let's make a simple calculation. What will happen to a power transistor if you set, for example, 3 volts on the output and connect the load that will consume a current of 3 amperes? At the output, there is nothing to worry about. The output power will be only 9 watts. But the transistor will have a voltage drop of 37 volts and at a current of 3 amperes it's about 110 watts of power in the form of useless heat. It needs to be effectively removed and requires a good radiator and a blowout. It is better to take a transformer with few outputs on the secondary winding and make a commutation system that works by the principle. The lower is the output voltage, then the less voltage is applied to the input and the transistor will work without overheating. It should be taken into account that the maximum output voltage from the stabilizer is always less than the input voltage. In our case, the difference is about 1.5 volts. I will not say that I tested everything, but I tested the circuit in different modes of operation, with different loads. Stability is good. Given the simplicity, this is one of the best circuits that I made. Believe me, I collected a lot of stabilizers. During the tests, in the pursuit of the maximum current, the output transistor was burned. So when setting value of current with a trimmer, I advise you to set the upper limit of the limit, no more than 2.5 to 3 amperes. And you must not replace this resistor with a jumper, as I did. Such a circuit will be useful not only for beginners for their first laboratory power supply, but also for repairmen, as the range of adjustments and the stable operation of the circuit make it possible to use it for repair of digital equipment. If the input voltage will change, the output stably holds within the specified limit. The same can be said about the current. The set current value will be maintained even with short circuits, so you can surely repeat this. I also made some tests related to the ripple of the output voltage, but all of this is likely to be presented as a separate video. If you want to see the continuation of this topic, then leave your feedback in the comments, and maybe this board will get its box, and of course, there will be more tests based on your wishes. Let me remind you that I, as always, undertook the hard work of the PCB design. You just have to download it along with the full archive of the project by the link in the description. There you will also find links to various stabilizers for laboratory power supplies. Please subscribe to the official group of channel and rate this video and of course wait for the release of new videos. On this I say goodbye until new meetings with you was Kassian TV.